It's light on. All right, so I'm playing with Tesla coils again, Slayer exciters. Never really stopped playing with them. But recently I've been uh, tinkering around a lot with the uh, rechargeable Slayer exciters, um, which is just practical to me. Um, towers of these size, a lot of people run them from nine volts, which is something I used to do a lot. I even took another tower and uh, wired it so I could wireless uh, recharge the nine volt with uh, one of slider uh, wireless uh, power transfer circuits, the, the uh, simple wireless energy circuit. Um, but I ended up just going back to the USB. Um, I've made a couple of videos about this, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to recommend more people out there do this for, for their Slayer exciters. But essentially just um, use a 3.7 volt, which is about a nominal 4.2 volt cell, it's sitting at about four volts now, but one of those rechargeable lithium cells. And um, you can find those in cheap USB power banks for less than $5, inside of which there will also be a charging circuit, which you can see right here. So that little charging circuit, which is gonna be hooked to that cell, is um, basically what boosts that voltage to give a USB 5 volt output and likewise it'll take a USB input to charge that cell and it'll stop charging that cell once it reaches about uh, 4.2 volts. So I threw one of those guys in here <clears throat> on one of my little exciters um, and I was happy to see that while first I was afraid that if I tried to run this circuit with anything less than 9 volts, I wouldn't be able to see any plasma. And I liked the plasma simply because I was able to use it as a lighter. Um, but with a little bit of playing around, I was able to get pretty similar results from this 4 volts. And I thought that was cool. And the great thing about that is also it just runs so much uh, more efficient. I mean, it, it <clears throat> takes so little energy. Um, Whereas before off a of nine volt, I was lucky to get, you know, maybe an hour tops before it's just not really usable anymore. Had to recharge it. This guy will run, you know, for like a whole day, I mean, about a 24 hour period before I have to recharge it. And um, that's why I've got this little digital readout right here. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it on real quick. Just to show, you can see from the drop, it's hardly pulling anything. And also the cell in here is a very cheap 18650 protected cell. And it's important that it's a protected cell because my circuits will oscillate down below two and a half volts and your cells don't uh, want to drop lower than that to maintain their health. It's a good idea that they'll cut off. A protection circuit's a good way to do that if you're using these for these. Um, so that way it won't continue to oscillate down below two and a half volts and uh, ruin your battery. Um, but I just wanted to show that for very minimal current draw, I mean, you can have a Slayer Exciter um, that'll do all the good stuff, you know, <clears throat> wireless light up stuff, um, you know, and all that good stuff. And luckily for me, I was still able to get, I'm going to try to, uh, whoops show here still able to get a little plasma out of there enough plasma where you know, it's not the easiest thing to do um but you can start a fire with it so you can see in this scenario i'm using it as an emergency lighter where if you hold it just right you can have that little plasma streamer reach out and um start fires you know like i say if you're trying to light a cigarette or something, this might not be the most practical thing, but I have another coil about this size that will get it done uh, much better. But you can light a cigarette <laughs> that way, but don't smoke kids, it's bad for you. But anyway, just wanted to show that, just kind of let it run a little bit with this uh, voltage readout. I just kind of soldered on there real quick and I'm not gonna leave on there. We'll just kind of show you that it's running and it's drawing very little. It's This is really the only way for me to do this. It's, I can't, <clears throat> it's too hard for me to show a, a true current draw on these circuits with a meter. 
So you really have to go by the voltage drop. <clears throat> now, uh, cut this guy off real quick. Oh, this freaking light. So when the circuit is ran down, <clears throat> which you can actually tell a lot of times with these uh, USB little driver boards, because this particular one has a button on it, and you have to press that button first to engage the USB output. So let's just say I wanted to use this for whatever reason to try to put some charge on my phone. I would have to hit that button first, and then it'll engage the output. But it's got these little red blink blinking lights here. And um, when it's a solid red, that lets you know it's full. And these blinking lights just sort of uh, ramp down to, depending on the voltage. But uh, I'm just going to show uh, the whole point of the USB so you can just recharge it. I've got a little uh, power bank circuit I made here, which is the same deal, by the way. I use the USB output and charge circuit from a USB power bank and just put more batteries in there and um, added a light. But <clears throat> so I'm gonna plug this in, let's charge it. So cut this light off. So you can see while it's charging, I've got these blinking lights here. So it's blinking four, which means it's it's almost fully charged. But um, after some time, it'll go a solid red, lets me know it's fully charged all the way. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. So essentially. <clears throat> Excuse me. You just got your your protected battery. This is a piece of crap battery with very poor um, capacity. USB circuit down there. You just put your circuit straight to your battery, and then you run your uh, tower straight to your battery through a switch. Very very simple. Not complicated at all. Um, another here's another example of one I made that way. This is a um, same deal it's got the same type of battery on the inside and it's got the char charging circuit in there as well so i can use this for just general tesla coil awesomeness for many 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 hours actually this this turned out to be a pretty practical uh night light because i can throw well fluorescent on there this 26 watt doesn't want to light all the way up but i can throw this on there and uh just let it run for hours and hours and hours and hours and um it's pretty practical so that's that guy also rechargeable same deal now this guy is one that i decided i just needed to run it from some good juice so I basically just kind of bootlegged a couple 18650 connections on there. And that's all that is. It's really not hard to make. One side, you just make sure that they're seriesed, uh, which is on this end, actually. And then right here, you just have your positive and negative input. So I just kind of rigged some springs on there with a little cheapo piece of paper covered in tape holder deal. And that just, you know... Just holds the batteries in and I can throw these out and put them on my uh, lithium ion charger. But that successfully gives me uh, roughly the same voltage as what a 9 volt battery would. And I have a lot more battery capacity that way. So this guy. Oops. Make sure this guy's in there. So once I had this guy actually hooked up right, um, I've got a little uh, digital readout on there also. That kind of helps. But this one gives out um, much better plasma, which is why I like this guy. This guy can start a fire um, very minimal effort. I mean, you just kind of have to hold something up near the end, and there you go. It's... Basically, will erupt in a flame, uh, whatever you're lighting. Very handy. And uh, likewise, this guy draws a little more energy from the series than these other ones. But I was I was very happy with 
the output and the runtime from um, using two rechargeable lithium cells. So if anybody has these 18650s, really give those a shot. They're awesome. So lastly, I just want to show some cool tinkerings. Um, I was playing around with these guys yesterday, and I figured I'd see what would happen if I charged one with the other, or rather hooked up the charge cable like that, um, and just cut one of them on to see what would happen to the other one. Just kind of show an example. I'll cut this guy on right here. This circuit is off. But it certainly, um, let's see if I can get a better CF or fluorescent here. There is a little coherence there, as you can see, due to this cable connection here, which is pretty cool. I have to uh, take my camera down to pan out get a better view of that but I thought that was pretty cool so let me pull this camera out all right so I've got this guy here connected USB cable over here and that cable essentially uh, really just has a connection from this circuit through the battery to where this cable is connected I mean it really serves no other function other than a virtual ground that both of these are tied to so when I cut this one on none of these guys are on right here when I cut this one on see for one the little indicator light on this one comes on which is also kind of cool you can see that the digital voltage readout over here starts coming on so it's actually picking up some DC through this coil here and I would imagine simply by uh, holding this cable near it and do the same thing yeah I can get it to just the potential coming out of this cable from that live circuit there but I'm essentially able to hope that I can get this in with one hand and go to flip it so put this back in there. You can see that's kind of cool. There, there's some coherence there. And um, if I like this guy, doesn't quite want to stay on across the way. But you can see this guy over here will light. Really move it all the way back there. And this little tower here, it's not really getting a... a a uh, resonant coherence but it's able to light that fluorescent from there it'll go further than that I thought that was pretty cool likewise you know should light right there a little bit yeah, I thought that was pretty cool so you're still able to do all this cool stuff um, with such a low input and I, mean, I could I could bring this back. That's about as far as I can get it. You know, that's a little less than two feet. That's about that's about a little over two feet right there actually. So that's not bad. And you know, I'm see I'm getting a, a, over. It's bouncing around, getting roughly three volts over there in <laughs> DC. It's probably not a lot. But thought that was pretty cool. I don't believe that's the entirety of what I was trying to show and what I was seeing the other day, but that's all I can remember right now. So, yeah, maybe I'll come up with something else.